zombie was an interesting machine to make. Uh, I learned quite a lot of new tricks while I was doing it. Um, and this video is about how I made it. Uh, but as with all these videos, I think it's best to start by seeing how the finished machine turned out. Are you an eye zombie? You are about to find out. To get started, place your phone in the red phone holder below. Now, stand on the foot plates and place your hands either side of the machine on the hand plates. You are now in position to face the eye zombies. Slide the hand plates from side to side to avoid bumping into them. You have nine lives. button below. <laughs> this proves your phone addiction is worse than we thought. You are truly an eye zombie. So I'm not an eye zombie myself. Uh, I don't do any social media uh, apart from my YouTube channel. Um, but at the time, my grandson, who was a teenager, was retreating deeply into his phone. It was hard to get a word out of him. Uh, and I did at times think that he was almost becoming like a zombie. Uh, so, because for that reason, I got interested in phone obsession. And uh, at some point, I connected it with a wonderful arcade machine that I'd seen in America a few years before, called Roadrunner. Made in 1971, there was a brief fashion for machines like this, sort of precursors to video games, but actually just the clever use of mirrors and UV light to combine two separate scenes, in this case, the road and the car. Machines like this in working condition are now very, very rare. So it was my interest in phone obsession, uh, combined with uh, the spooky effect of uh, Roadrunner, that really were my starting points for this machine. Uh, so, as with Roadrunner, if I open this up, you 
can see that the zombies are actually below, uh, moving upwards towards you. And what you're actually looking at is just uh, their reflection in, in a mirror. But the man you're operating, he's not down there. Um, i turn the machine around a bit more. And open the side up. Uh, he's actually hidden away in the back here. You can see it more clearly if I turn on his spotlight. Uh, there he is. So it's a semi-silvered mirror, like in Roadrunner, that combines the view of uh, the zombies and the view of the man. Um, and it all looks sort of quite straightforward, but actually it took me a couple of months just to work out the, um, the basic optics to get it to work like this. So if you look through a window, you can often see both what's inside the room or inside a shop window uh, and also a reflection of what's going on in the street outside. So if I hold up a bit of plastic um, you could see quite clearly um, the reflection of parts of my workshop that are caught in the sunlight. Well to increase the reflection to make the reflections brighter um, you can use what's called a semi-silvered mirror. Uh, so now if I hold this up um, you'll see the uh, workshop very brightly and you'll only see me really pretty dimly peering through the back. So that, that's a big improvement. The only trouble with semi-silver mirrors is that it's expensive to buy this stuff. Um, but the cheap way to do it is to use car window film. Um, the only trouble with that is it's quite difficult to apply. Um, I made a bit of a mess of, of this piece uh, when I was doing it yesterday. So, uh, the difficult thing is to make uh, the two images, the reflected image and the one straight ahead, look reasonably solid and not too transparent. Uh, so to do this, um, you make the backgrounds as dark as you can. So I, I found that black flock vinyl or black velvet worked the best in iZombie. And then if you light it, things up, um, they show up quite convincingly solid. I shot this video while I was working on it. At that point I was struggling to get the man to look as solid as the zombies. I gradually realised it was because I was lighting the zombies with ultraviolet light which was making the white paper fluoresce. Uh, soon afterwards I decided not to use UV um, because the light from the zombies phones just didn't look so good uh, lit that way. There's also this bit of video I'd forgotten about. Uh, I'd forgotten that I thought initially it was essential for the person using the machine to be walking like a zombie. I think gradually the practical problems uh, became insurmountable and I gave up on the idea. Then there were other ideas that had to be abandoned as well, even though I liked them at the time. I got very excited on a train thinking that, that as you got, you could actually sort of get sucked into the phone, that the surround would come forward uh, and this would all be blacked out around here, so that you'd be in, in, sort of inside the phone. So once I'd sort of settled the rough dimensions of the machine, I could start on all the details. So the zombie belt, or the chains that drive it round, um, I bought some very expensive special attachment chain. And it's more. made to order, and I think uh, the two little chains cost two or three hundred pounds, I seem to remember. But it was well worth it. Um, I, I, if they're difficult to see in the finished machine, the idea is they make these special links that uh, have uh, holes in to attach to something else. Of course, in my case, I'm attaching them to the slats that the uh, zombies walk on. Um, then, of course, I had to get the, uh, some electricity to light up the phones that the zombies are carrying. Um, 
So I could have done that with slip rings, but in fact, I, what I did, I isolated one side of the machine from the other. So one uh, chain is carrying uh, positive current and uh, the other chain is connected to negative. So you can see the, the chain <laughs> looks quite uh, greasy. Um, and that's because as it got dirty, um, the, it made less good electrical contact and so the lights on the zombies phones got dimmer and dimmer. Uh, until I found that uh, you could buy stuff called electrically conductive grease uh, and that completely solved the problem in a couple of minutes. Uh, and it gives the zombie phones this lovely flickering effect, uh, much more interesting than if I just used slip rings. So once I'd sort of got the belt sorted, the next problem was the little man at the back. So he is quite complicated, possibly stupidly complicated, because uh, not only does he move sideways, I should have said I can control all the different uh, motions from the individual relays. So uh, he moves sideways, obviously, um, and he has to move the whole width of the machine. But in addition to that, um, he has to look round to um, uh, face the zombies. Uh, he also has to fall over when he's hit. Um, and if you lose, um, the man himself becomes uh, an eye zombie, uh, so he has to look down at his phone. <laughs> It's hard to see the man's mechanisms that move him about inside the machine. So I made this mock-up of uh, the side-to-side -side, uh, mechanism. So it's a little sliding rail at the back here with um, a little fine-toothed belt. I had to use tooth belt because I was very stuck for space. So the sides of the machine are very close to the edges and the man has to go really as, as far to this edge as he possibly can. Um, so this meant, uh, the first problem was I couldn't get a belt that was exactly the right, right length so I had to cut a longer one. Um, that obviously reduces its strength a lot but uh, I didn't need a lot of strength for this, so that wasn't too much of a problem. But I also had to join it in a very compact way. So um, this is how I ended up doing it. Uh, it took me a while to work this out. So this uh, little copper thing, um, it's actually uh, a bit of copper that's a ferrule for um, joining, um, ending off stainless steel cable. You crimp it on. Uh, things look like uh, like like this. To feed the belt in, I first had to make a steel wedge to enlarge the ferrule a bit. So once I could feed the belt through, uh, I added a short length on top of the uh, original belt, uh, so the teeth meshed together. But then I could hammer it all flat and then put it in the vise to crimp the ends to really clamp it all together. Uh, it's not perfect, but uh, <laughs> it's the best that I've found. But uh, it's a difficult problem. Despite all these various problems, progress was surprisingly fast. So after a couple of months, it was ready for testing by Sam, my grandson. After I got the insides working, uh, I could think about the exterior of the machine. Um, and here, uh, the big problem was that uh, 
the mirrors, using mirrors, um, they always reflect a wider angle than you expect. I've had this problem with several machines, um, but particularly with this one. Um, so the only way to avoid seeing things you don't want to is to restrict the viewing angle. Uh, so in this case, um, I ended up with really a pretty tiny hole. It's just about 150 mil high. Uh, so that's a tiny hole for such a big machine. It was all, that's the only area you can look through. Um, in fact, I had to make a, a stool for kids to stand on to give them any chance of uh, seeing what was going on. But he left a lot of uh, space to fill up. Um, but here was a, I was fortunate that uh, because I don't know much about uh, smartphones uh, myself, um, I was working with two very talented young guys called Louis Barclay and Liam Shaw. And they came up with some ideas and Louis did the graphics uh, for, for the screens at the top and, and the bottom, uh, which I then animated. Uh, and these add enormously to the machine. They make the whole thing a much richer exper experience and much more like a smartphone. Um, so that was, that was a big leap forward. And once I got the, the contents of the screen sorted, I could then make the case around the outside. Uh, and this I enjoy. I enjoy a bit of sheet metal work. And uh, so it's just uh, made of stainless steel. But although it looks seamlessly one thing, it's actually made of lots and lots of bits, TIG welded together. In fact, it's the most ambitious bit of TIG welding I've ever done. Uh, you can just see inside in the corners um, all the different bits that <laughs> were joined together. And what you do, once it looks messy on the outside to start with, you see all the welds but you can then grind them back and, and sort of blend them, it's called, uh, blend them in so that the whole thing just looks it was seamless, literally seamless. It's a rather magical effect. It did take a long time though. So the machine was almost finished, um, but uh, and Louis and Liam and I were talking and uh, I think it was Louis said it would be nice if the machine could involve your own phone in some sort of way and uh, started talking about having an app that you'd have to log into. Uh, and then jokingly, and I can't remember who it was now, uh, one of us suggested, oh, perhaps it could steal your phone. Uh, and I immediately latched onto that, went home, and within two weeks had a prototype of the phone snatcher, which is now my favorite part of the machine. So the phone snatcher was actually quite an interesting challenge. Um, because it has to uh, steal your phone quite quickly, well, it mustn't damage the phone. At first I thought people would be so uh, worried by their phone disappearing that I left the sides of the uh, phone snatcher open so you could always uh, retrieve it easily. Uh, but I found people just re retrieved it, got it back too easily. Their friends noticed it immediately. Um, so I then enclosed the whole of the space underneath and uh, that made it more of a challenge uh, and you now have to press the emergency button on the other side uh, to, to open it out uh, and get your phone back. I actually had to rebuild this uh, last year because phones keep getting bigger. <laughs> well, I made this machine about seven years ago and uh, it's not been without its problems, it's probably a bit too complicated for its own good. Uh, but I do like it, particularly watching people's reactions when they're told that their phone has been confiscated for three hours. Uh, their alarm uh, shows, I think, that most people are eye zombies to some extent. Uh, perhaps more surprisingly, um, they've just been a few honourable exceptions where people have actually left their phones inside the machine. Uh, maybe only four or five. Uh, and I think most of them came back to collect it later. Uh, but I think perhaps they're the only people who've ever used this machine that can truly be classified as not eye zombies.